tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hello folks, in this tutorial I show you how you can easily manage to create a complex animation with particles or steam or arrow particles with just a few clicks. And uh, in order to do this properly and uh, impressively, I start with this animation and I'm not going to show you how I did it. But there's a tutorial I did, uh, I think, two or three years ago about mathematics and cosine and sine functions, which is very easy to understand, I guess, and uh, it works here as well. If you want to see, visualize this complex animation, by the way, go to animation and then visualize pretty obvious and create an editable motion trail and then you see the complexity of this animation and uh, I really like to use these functions because they give such a complex and smooth well animation using no keyframes at all so let me delete the, the motion trail and what I'll do now is I create a bifrost graph Bifrost Graph Editor, a new graph, and I don't need the input, maybe I need it later, I could actually use it later, but what I do now is, by the way, this is a group, this is one of the magic of this animation, I middle mouse drag the sphere, not the group, into this area here. Now I press the tab key, and here you see the previous things I tried out. Uh, what we want to do now is basic, we type in basic and uh, we create a basic particle graph. And uh, with the right mouse button we can explode it. That means we get the four modules of this basic particle graph. And what I always like to do in this case, I click with the right mouse button somewhere in between these selected objects uh, or nodes and I create a backdrop. So I can move that backdrop around and it stays as it is, but inside I could edit it. The standard procedure to add particles to our sphere is this. We connect the output of the, of the particle shape to the geometry of the source particles. That's the source the source particle looks for a source and then um, the particles go into the output that's basically all there is and um, here we have lots of particles shooting out one of the advantages of the bifrost graph system as opposed to the n particle world is the performance the performance is just amazing I want to show you an animation which is not impressive at all but um, it does the same thing with uh, this connection uh, with instead of particles I had an arrow system it's basically the same and you have to tune the arrow in order to get an explosion or fire etc here I just have this steam at a pretty low temperature but this is a, another topic uh, I do it with particles because they perform so fast so it's it's really nice to do this now I disconnect this and with the tab key I create a fractal noise field fractal noise field it sits here and it accepts values obviously and um, it wants to feed in the output, the noise field output, which is just a uh, more or less random a fractal number uh, into one of these inputs here. And uh, one of the inputs we could use is the particle's properties. We have the speed, for example, and uh, when we connect the speed in here, we don't get an error message. Let's reconnect this. I should have let it uh, connect it anyway. And uh, now the fractal noise field, which has a magnitude of 1, a number of frequencies of 3, a frequency of 0 0.5, a ratio, etc. We can or change this. Controls the speed of our particles. Does it make a difference? It sure does. 
you see that we have this more or less random, it's based on the fractal function, output of the particles. Let's go back to the graph and we could now create another fractal noise field but we can also use the same output into, well, for example, and feed it into the spread of our particles. Difference? Well, not very much, but when we increase the magnitude to 10, we should see a difference. Also on the speed, on all the parameters we f fed in from the fractal field into our two inputs. Shall we re reduce this, the magnitude? Well, let's go to 3. So it has an influence on the speed and on the spread. It's really fun to play with these parameters here and if you want more control as I said you can introduce a second noise field where you change the magnitude or the frequency for example uh, and feed it into the bounciness or whatever but I want to tell you before we actually leave is how to make this um, the particles more colorful uh, this these particles actually do render just nice it looks as exactly as in the viewport but if you want uh, a shader there are several ways to do this and one is to type in and search basically for a surface material and here you find standard surface material the standard surface material has base color values for red green and blue Diffuse roughness, it has basically the same things as we're used to from the Arnold and other render engines. But we need to have an output here and the output goes not directly into this output because we need to assign the material. So let's type in assign and we assign the material. This is the node. So the connection goes like this. We disconnect this. Basically, by the way, no particles here because we disconnected it. Now we uh, connect the particles to the geometry of the assigned material node. The standard surface goes into the surface material. We could pump it into the volume input as well, I guess. And the out geometry, the, the shaded geometry, goes into our out output. We cannot use this input, we can actually delete it, uh, and the output accepts many other ports, inputs. So, what is happening now? Nothing really different, because it's still white, and the reason is, of course, we're here in RGB, and we reduce the green value to zero. Now we get a different color, obviously, because we have no green. We have a mixture of red and blue, which is violet, which is lilac, lila in German. And when we uh, type in 0 0.9 for the blue value, it's uh, a little bit more blue. Bottom line is, use the Bifrost Graph editor in order to create amazing particle fire steam sand, snow emissions. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.